And to discuss the hottest topic of this week and of the recent months, we have here in the studio the former deputy of the uh, former deputy of the general prosecutor of Ukraine, Vitaly Kasko. So there is uh, much more to speak about the uh, the whole, um, let's say, I would say the crisis and the scandal regarding that. Thanks for being with us. Uh, so uh, Vitaly, just really for our foreign audience uh, who probably follows and know there is something going on and something very big, would you explain what's going on with the general prosecutor office with this? What is the story? To be shortly, the General Prosecutor's Office of Ukraine is falling down. So in my view, the resignation of uh, Deputy Prosecutor General David Sakharovitsa is another example of revenge of the former Prosecutor General. Uh, first of all, for the case of so-called Diamond Prosecutors. And uh, the, the main problem in the office still remains the lack of reforms. It is still Soviet-type prosecution service with all these problems with corruption and high, uh, high level of corruption and uh, low qualification of prosecution. But why the reform hadn't taken place? You know, there are so much talks that is one of the most crucial, if not the, the, the most important. Everybody's watching out, the foreign partners, the journalists, all these anti-corruption fighters, but... There, there are several reasons why uh, it didn't happen. Uh, first of all, there, there, no, there was no political will to reform the prosecution service, and without this political will, it's really hard even to imagine how to reform it in accordance with European standards. Uh, and um, another reason uh, was that uh, leadership of the office and uh, prosecutors who they are opposing the reform, they in fact won and uh, didn't uh, even give a chance for the reformers to, to make the reform um, successfully. Uh, but is it the, um, you know, just the will of these old style uh, prosecutors? What is it? Because there are talk that there is a direct involvement of the president, of the other politicians. Uh, that's really hard to imagine that uh, only part of the Prosecutor General's office without any support from uh, outside, without political support, could uh, prevent uh, the office from being reformed. In my view, uh, of course, uh, there, there are some uh, external influences uh, in this respect. If you speak about external influences, you know, what that, what is the... <laughs> Who's? You know, in, in Ukraine, uh, the Prosecutor General's office is a very important institution, and uh, it's, it's really sad, but uh, again, according to the uh, legislation, the figure of the Prosecutor General uh, is uh, always an um, area of interest of different politicians. It's very uh, dependent on different political influences. For instance, uh, you know that the Prosecutor General of Ukraine is appointed by the President with the consent of the Parliament. And uh, also there is a, a right of the Parliament to uh, vote for non-confidence to the Prosecutor General. And uh, of course this um, authority, this power, is used by the politicians to influence the Prosecutor General. Let's, let's imagine there is um, uh, a criminal case against somebody who is in the sphere of political interest. And uh, the member of parliament is very interested to, uh, interested to close this case. This member of parliament can uh, sign the petition to uh, fire the prosecutor general and come to the prosecutor general and say that, of course, I can uh, take my signature away, but uh, I need this criminal proceedings to be uh, terminated. And uh, it's, it's only a small example how it is possible to use the uh, external influences uh, to influence the prosecutor general and the office. And the office itself has uh, many other problems, like uh, lack of independence of prosecutors within the office. Uh, prosecutors who are not uh, on, on administrative positions, they are uh, under the influence of the high-ranking prosecutors. And it's very hard to imagine if uh, the uh, lower prosecutor receives instruction from the senior prosecutor that this prosecutor will not execute this instruction. Usually, 
uh, these instructions are followed. And this is the problem, because uh, if not, this prosecutor can be blamed, can be uh, uh, prosecuted, can be put on uh, disciplinary responsibility, and so on. So what, what they have at the moment, this is the uh, Soviet-type hierarchical structure of the prosecution service, this lack of independence of the prosecutor general from external influences, and lack of uh, independence of lower prosecutors from higher prosecutors. Uh, but Vitaly, you've been for some time within this system. What do you think you could have possibly done? What you've done differently if uh, you had a chance? Unfortunately, I didn't have any powers uh, to uh, organize the reform of prosecution service. My competence was uh, always international cooperation and um, in some uh, periods representation of uh, state in the courts and also general inspection of prosecution service. Uh, but even in these spheres, they did a lot. Uh, they uh, used our um, powers to uh, recover assets using non-criminal based uh, methods. They used representation in different courts like commercial courts or administrative courts to recover assets of former high-ranking officials. They are not talking about criminal asset recovery, they are talking about using other alternative methods of uh, recovering assets. Uh, they also did a lot, they, they provided the investigation department with the best experts in asset recovery sphere. Uh, they invited experts from the ICAR, uh, from, from World Bank, from uh, FBI and uh, serious fraud office from Great Britain. So they, they did our best to, to help. They Would you say it's all in vain? Um, unfortunately, this assistance wasn't used. Uh, all these experts, they tried to help, but they uh, didn't receive access to the case files. But now you can say that the uh, former general prosecutor Shokin had been ousted by the parliament. So there is a progress or what we can expect? Uh, what... Uh, can expect, I think that they can hope for the uh, new prosecutor general uh, who can be independent enough to resist to any external influences. Uh, in my view, it should be an independent person uh, and uh, this person should be respected by the legal community in Ukraine, by, by the people in Ukraine and by our foreign partners. And at this point of view, are there other candidates or is there, let's say, all these people you said are, um, in, let's say, in charge or can do something about this figure? So mm -hmm. what can be done? Because that could be somebody else just instead of shock uh, of former general In my view, there are a lot of uh, reliable candidates in Ukraine and abroad which uh, can meet the requirements I already uh, described. But the main threat can be uh, appointment of uh, one of the persons who are in the circle of uh, Mr. Shokin. Because in this situation, we will have uh, business as usual in the general prosecutor's office. How close we are to that? Uh, I really hope that the civil society and uh, our parliament will not uh, make uh, such a mistake like it was uh, during the previous appointments of the prosecutor general. If you speak David Sekvarlidze, uh, who had to leave his position, also why he didn't manage? He has some, you know, why it took him so long to speak out and why it didn't? I understand these are direct questions to him, that could be, but Absolutely. Still. As far as I know, his position, he is not not going to be the prosecutor general. I don't know what are the reasons, uh, but uh, this is his firm. But why are we speaking, you know, it's also another thing. A lot of things you can do, uh, you know, in, in this kind of um, institutions that you, you just do your investigation, you keep quiet, you don't do, take a polit political stand. So the issue, why, for instance, Sakura Lidze, or in this case, you can't really just do your job uh, because it's all looks, sometimes somebody would say for, you know, as, as a uh, start of another political career. Uh, to do our job uh, effectively, being deputy prosecutor general, they need to be the part of the team, with the prosecutor general who wants to change the system. And uh, to do this job effectively, these deputies prosecutor general, all seniors, senior prosecutors and lower prosecutors should be independent enough from the procedural point of view. Uh, they need to have 
political will in the office to change the situation and they need to have checks and balances within the office and to make the prosecutors independent enough to do their job honestly and effectively. And finally, there were some criminal charges against you. What is that? What are you accused of? Uh, I'm not accused at the moment. It's just uh, the... There are five criminal proceedings, as far as I know, uh, investigated by different, different institutions, but uh, initiated by several people, uh, shocking and people around him. So in my view, this is the clear example of revenge. Uh, on behalf of the prosecutor, uh, prosecutor general for the diamond prosecutor's case, for my assessment of so-called reform in the, prosecutor, in the prosecutor general's office. And there are different criminal proceedings. Uh, so it, 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 it means that the fantasy of these people is very wide. But maybe you would explain what it's all about. <laughs> uh, it's about different things. Uh, for instance, uh, they think that the arrest in Zlachevsky case was... People probably would know what that case, you know, our uh, <laughs> international audience... You... It's, it's uh, one of the former high-ranking officials from Yanukovych team and uh, his money there frozen in Great Britain by British prosecutors. But unfortunately, because of the uh, ineffective investigation in Ukraine, uh, the arrest was lifted by the court in, in Great Britain and... Uh, of course, uh, the, the main reason was uh, the lack of uh, activity in uh, Ukrainian investigation. And of course, uh, Casco was never responsible for the investigation in this case, because they, they are the deputies prosecutor general who they in charge of this investigation. But anyway, they think that it's necessary to check uh, what is my role in this. It's about uh, Kurchenko case, who, you know, another, maybe, close. another close people to uh, Yanukovych team. Uh, but again, that's really hard to understand the uh, essence of uh, the problem from this uh, criminal proceedings. But at the same time, they would say that, uh, you know, with, for instance, about your, uh, there is a things about the arrest of the uh, yes, apartment, the, your apartment. The third and the fourth criminal proceedings, uh, which are investigated by different institutions, but on the same facts. So it's about the arrest of your apartment. So that somebody would say, like, you know, if you have this all independent guys who come, why they shouldn't be screened? If everything is fine, okay, let's look at their case. But the, the most funny thing that I was screened uh, several times, and this apartment was always in my uh, asset declaration. Yeah. Uh, it was um, provided by the prosecutor general's office in, in uh, 2008. So eight years ago. So it is in the declaration uh, for years. It is uh, transparent. Everybody knows about this. Moreover, the prosecutor general's office checked several times uh, this declaration uh, during illustration procedure. And it's uh, again funny that the prosecutor general Shokin signed the statement that all my assets are legal and everything is fine. But after Diamond prosecutor's case, they uh, decided to check it again. I think we should also explain the Diamond Prosecutor's cl case closely to remind what is that. Uh, it's a case initiated in the end of June last uh, year. During this case, uh, it's a case about bribery. Um, and during the searches in uh, apartment and offices of high-ranking prosecutors in Ukraine, a lot of money uh, they found and the um, the bribe was found uh, also uh, during one of the searches. So they, they are talking about big amount of money, they are talking about uh, high-ranking prosecutors, and these prosecutors, they are uh, suspected and accused in this crime. Uh, I was one of the deputies prosecutor general who they are in charge of this case. Uh, I was dealing with prosecutors in this case, and the Vistic Release was dealing with investigators. And uh, what I promised to the society that this case will be sent to court, so I, did, I, I, I will do my best to do it, and I did it. So they sent it uh, to the court. Now it's uh, in the process of uh, trial. But um, because these people, they are close to the former prosecutor general, uh, they uh, had uh, for months uh, very strong resistance in this case. Our prosecutors and investigators, they are, uh, are threatened, they are uh, prosecuted in different criminal proceedings and only because of the interference of uh, media and, uh, and society, 
be there still investigating this case. And Vitaly, for the end of the, um, you know, this uh, rather general question, but which is raised by a lot of foreign colleagues. You know, they ask, like, why these Ukrainians are again and again quarreling between themselves, arguing, can't make the, can't find a common ground in that kind of critical moment. So probably there are a lot of, you know, disputes, but in, it can't be that in all institutions, what would be your answer to that? Uh, I don't think that the situation in the prosecutor general's office is what, like you said. I think that uh, they're there to deputy prosecutor general who they're trying to change the system, but uh, there was no uh, political will to change the system, and uh, the result, you know, uh, at the moment. If they are talking about political life, uh, unfortunately, this is the traditional picture for Ukrainian society. But, um, I was al always upset why uh, the de democratic uh, political parties which uh, became a uh, ruling party in Ukraine. In the end, they, they are just uh, having quarrels and problems with each other. I think that uh, it's very important for the Ukrainian society to uh, find a compromise and to follow the way of reforms finally, because uh, they don't have any other way out. In this what, you going, what are you going to do? I'm going to continue my expert and uh, defense uh, lawyer's work, and uh, I will uh, always help any reformers in uh, law enforcement sphere and the prosecution sphere if they want my advice. Okay, thanks a lot. That was former uh, Deputy General Prosecutor of Ukraine, Vitaly Kashko, and we'll be back in a minute.